Indonesia, with more than 17,000 islands and a coastline of more than 54,000 kilometers, is a country whose culture and economy are closely linked to the sea. Among the many traditional occupations of Indonesians, hand fishing for tuna has existed for centuries, not only as a means of livelihood but also as part of the cultural heritage and national identity. Hand fishing for tuna, also known as pole and line fishing, dates back to early Indonesian history. Fishermen in coastal areas learn to utilize the abundant marine resources to feed their families and communities. Tuna fishing not only provided food but also contributed greatly to the income of fishing communities. Hand fishing for tuna is especially popular in regions such as Maluku, Sulawesi and Bali. Here, people have passed down the techniques and experience of tuna fishing through generations, ensuring that this valuable knowledge is not lost. Each region has its own methods and secrets, suitable for the geographical and environmental conditions of that region. Tuna fishing is not only an economic activity but also has a strong cultural identity, reflecting the deep relationship between people and the sea. For Indonesian people, the sea is not only a resource but also a part of spiritual life. Many rituals and traditions are held around fishing, such as fishing festivals, sea thanksgiving ceremonies, and fishing festivals. Traditional stories, songs, and dances often tell about the lives of fishermen, their challenging voyages, and their exploits in the face of the sea. Tuna fishing has thus become an indispensable part of Indonesian folklore. Tuna fishing plays an important role in the lives of coastal fishing communities in Indonesia. For many families, this profession is the main source of income, helping them to maintain their lives and raise their children. Many fishing communities have formed and developed around tuna fishing, creating bustling and vibrant fishing villages. Fishing communities often have close relationships with each other, supporting each other in fishing activities, sharing experiences and overcoming difficulties together. Tuna fishing, with its high community spirit, has helped to unite community members and create a strong social network. However, tuna fishing also faces many challenges, such as competition from modern fishing methods, climate change and the decline of tuna resources. These challenges require fishing communities to adapt and find sustainable solutions to maintain traditional tuna fishing. Hand fishing for tuna in Indonesia is an inseparable part of the culture and life of the people of this country. With a long history and deep cultural significance, this profession not only contributes to the economy but also helps maintain and develop traditional values. In the modern context, tuna fishing is facing many challenges, but with solidarity and creativity, Indonesian people can continue to maintain and develop this profession in the future. Hand fishing for tuna is an art that requires skill, patience, and a deep understanding of the sea. This technique not only requires the fisherman to have experience, 
but also requires them to be delicate and sensitive in observing the behavior of tuna. Here is a detailed look at the process and techniques of hand fishing for tuna in Indonesia. Before starting a tuna fishing trip, fishermen must be thoroughly prepared both mentally and physically. Checking the boat. The boat is the main means of transport for fishermen, so checking the boat before going to sea is very important. Fishermen need to ensure that their boat is in good condition, fully fueled, and equipped with necessary safety equipment such as life jackets, signal lights, and rescue tools. Preparing fishing equipment, tuna fishing equipment includes fishing rods, fishing lines, hooks, and bait. The rod used for hand fishing for tuna is usually a long, sturdy rod with high load-bearing capacity. The fishing line must be long and strong enough to cope with the strength of the tuna. The hook must be sharp and firmly attached to the fishing line. Choosing bait, the bait commonly used is small fish, squid or artificial bait specially designed to attract tuna. Fishermen need to choose the appropriate bait depending on the species of tuna and the sea conditions at the time of fishing. Planning the trip. Before going to sea, fishermen must have a detailed plan of the route, fishing spots and expected time for the trip. They need to grasp information about the weather, currents and movements of the tuna school. Hand fishing for tuna, also known as pole and line fishing, is a technique that requires fishermen to have skills and dexterity. The process of hand fishing for tuna usually involves the following steps. Finding tuna schools. Fishermen use traditional and modern observation techniques to locate tuna schools. Signs such as seabird movements, watercolor, and unusual waves can be signs that tuna schools are nearby. In addition, some fishermen use modern technology such as radar and sonar to detect schools of fish. Attracting tuna. Once the location of the tuna school is determined, fishermen begin the process of attracting them by using baits and water flushing techniques to create foam making the tuna think that there is a school of small fish being hunted. This stimulates the tuna's hunting instinct, causing them to rush to this area. Fishing, when the tuna begin to gather around the boat, fishermen use long fishing rods to drop bait into the water. The technique of fishing for tuna by hand requires agility and speed, as fishermen need to quickly pull the fish up when it bites, and at the same time, prepare immediately for the next bait drop. This is a continuous process, requiring smooth coordination between members of the fishing team. Processing fish after fishing, after catching tuna, fishermen must quickly process the fish to ensure quality. Tuna is cleaned and cooled right on the boat to keep the fish meat fresh. In some cases, tuna is stored in cold storage or on ice to keep it fresh until the boat returns to shore. In Indonesia, there are many different species of tuna, each with its own characteristics and behaviors, requiring different fishing techniques. Yellowfin tuna, this is the most popular tuna species in Indonesia. 
Yellowfin tuna are typically found in warm waters and can be found in areas such as Sulawesi and Maluku. Fishing techniques for yellowfin tuna often focus on using live bait and the chumming technique, sprinkling small baits into the water to attract fish. Big eye tuna. This species tends to live deeper than the yellowfin tuna, so fishing for big eye tuna often requires fishermen to use longer rods and heavier lines. Deep sea fishing is often used. Skipjack tuna. The skipjack tuna is a smaller species, usually found in shallower waters. Fishing techniques for skipjack tuna are often simpler, and this species is often attracted to artificial baits and trolling techniques, pulling bait behind the boat. Indonesia is a large country with many rich marine resources, many of which are famous for tuna fishing. Each region has its own natural conditions and fishing techniques, creating diversity in hand fishing tuna. The Maluku Islands, also known as the Moluccas, are famous for their rich marine resources, especially tuna. This is one of the main areas supplying tuna for both domestic and export markets. Environmental conditions, Maluku has deep seas and many coral reefs, creating an ideal environment for tuna to live. The flow from the Pacific Ocean also brings abundant food sources for tuna in this area. Cutting bluefin tuna is a highly technical and precise process, usually performed by professional chefs or experienced people. This fish is highly appreciated in cuisine, especially in sushi and sashimi dishes. Here are the basic steps to cut bluefin tuna. Before starting to cut bluefin tuna, you need to fully prepare the necessary tools. Fillet knife, yanagiba or deba, the knife must be sharp and have a long blade to be able to cut thin, even slices of fish. Large cutting board, a large, clean cutting board to ensure you have enough space to work. Fish tweezers, to pick small bones out of the fish meat. Clean towel, to wipe hands and tools. The first step is to wash the tuna thoroughly under cold water to remove any dirt. You will then need to dry the fish with a clean towel before you begin cutting. Place the fish on a cutting board, lay the tuna flat on the cutting board with the head facing you. the fish, using the deba knife, cut across the base of the head, just behind the gills. Cut firmly to ensure a clean cut. Tailing the fish. Next, cut off the tail of the fish. Place the knife just above the tail fin and cut across. This will allow easy access to the flesh as you continue cutting. Filling the bluefin tuna is the process of separating the flesh from the bones and skin. Cut. along the spine. Place the knife along the spine of the fish and cut a line from the head to the tail. This will separate half of the fish from the spine. 
Separating the flesh from the bone, place the knife close to the ribs and carefully cut along the bone to separate the flesh. Do this on both sides of the fish. Removing the skin, once the meat is separated from the bone, you need to peel off the skin. Place the meat on a cutting board with the skin side down, then place the knife close to the skin and cut gently to separate the skin from the meat. Removing small bones, use fish tongs to pick out any small bones left in the meat. Removing blood, there is often a strip of blood in the middle of the tuna meat, you need to remove this part to make the fish more delicious. Bluefin tuna has different cuts of meat, each with its own flavor and fat content. The fattiest meat, with distinct marbling, located near the belly of the fish. This is the most expensive and most popular cut. You can cut each piece of meat into thin slices, squares or rectangles depending on the intended use, sashimi, sushi, steak, etc. After cutting tuna, if you do not use it immediately, you should store the fish meat in the refrigerator or freezer to keep it fresh. Tuna meat is very sensitive to temperature, so it needs to be kept cold continuously to avoid spoilage. When serving, make sure that the fish slices are cut evenly and beautifully, and arrange them on a plate with a little decoration such as perilla leaves, thinly sliced daikon, and wasabi to create a peel. After finishing, wash all utensils and dry them to ensure hygiene and prolong the life of the knife and cutting board. Cutting bluefin tuna requires skill and skill, but with preparation and care, you can do it efficiently and beautifully. If you would like to learn more about the parts of the bluefin tuna and how they are used in cuisine, I can provide more details. Or if you would like me to continue with other specific fish cutting techniques, such as slicing sashimi or how to use each part of the fish in different dishes, let me know. Here are the details about the parts of the bluefin tuna and how they are used in cuisine, especially in Japanese dishes such as sushi and sashimi. Bluefin tuna can be divided into three main cuts based on the fat content and location on the fish's body. Each cut has its own distinct flavor and texture, making them suitable for different dishes. Location, Akami is the lean cut of meat, located on the back and near the spine of the fish. Characteristics, this cut is bright red, low in fat and high in protein. Akami is the most popular cut and is used extensively in sushi and sashimi. Culinary uses, Akami is often thinly sliced for sashimi or nigiri sushi. Because of its lean texture, Akami can be prepared in a variety of dishes such as tartaki, seared tuna, or as an ingredient in salads. Location, Chu Toro is located between the back and belly of the fish, where fat and muscle meet.
Characteristics Chew Toro meat is light pink with mixed fat marbling, giving it a moderate fat content and rich flavor. This part combines the softness of O Toro and the leanness of Akami. Culinary uses Chew Toro is very popular in sushi and sashimi because of its balanced fat content, giving it a rich flavor but not too greasy. In addition, Chew Toro can also be used in grilled or pan fried dishes to highlight the fatty flavor. Location, O Toro is the fattiest part of the meat, located in the belly of the fish, near the head. Characteristics, O Toro has white fat marbling mixed with pink meat, giving it a characteristic softness and fat content. This is the most expensive and sought after part of bluefin tuna. Culinary uses, O Toro is often sliced thickly and served as sashimi or sushi. The rich flavor of O Toro does not require any additional seasoning. Just a little soy sauce or wasabi is enough to highlight its natural flavor. Cutting sashimi from bluefin tuna requires technique to ensure the slices of fish are uniform in size and have a smooth surface, enhancing the flavor and feeling when eating. Use a yanagiba knife or a long, sharp knife specifically for cutting sashimi. The knife must be sharpened to ensure a smooth cut and not damage the structure of the fish. Cutting angle, to cut sashimi, cut the fish meat at a 45 degree angle. This creates thin slices but is thick enough to retain the soft texture of the fish. Size. Sashimi slices are usually about 1 cm thick, 5 to 7 cm long and 3 to 4 cm wide, depending on the purpose and the dish you want to serve. Decisive cut. When cutting, use a knife to draw a sharp line from top to bottom to create a smooth, flat surface. Avoid cutting back and forth many times as this can ruin the texture and shape of the sashimi. Sashimi is usually presented on a flat plate or in a traditional wooden box. Perilla leaves, grated daikon and fresh wasabi can be used for decoration and flavor. For sushi, the tuna meat, akami, chutoro, or otoro, will be placed on a piece of tightly packed sushi rice. Sometimes, a little wasabi will be brushed between the fish and rice to add flavor. Tartaki is lightly seared tuna, usually using akami or chutoro. The tuna is quickly seared at high temperatures, then thinly sliced and served with ponzu sauce and green onions. O Toro can be grilled or lightly pan-fried to highlight the fatty flavor. When cooked, the fat in the fish will melt, creating a crispy outer shell while the meat inside remains tender. Raw or pan-fried tuna can be cut into small pieces and mixed with green vegetables, fruits, and a light dressing to create a delicious tuna salad. Bluefin tuna should be stored at a deep cold temperature immediately after cutting to ensure freshness. If not used immediately, you can wrap the fish tightly and place it in the freezer. When ready to use, defrost slowly in the refrigerator to preserve the flavor and texture of the fish.